Welcome back to Another Thing. I'm Larry Menti. The fear of terrorism in Europe has affected travel. Is that rational? Eileen Kennedy Moore is a clinical psychologist and author of Growing Friendships. Thanks so much for being here. So, so you know how it happens. People I've talked to said, oh, I'm not going to go to Europe. There's all these terrorist attacks. And uh, yeah, now I'm hearing that they could use cell phones and they could use uh, laptops on a plane to blow up a plane. So I'm not going to get on a plane. Oh, it's so scary to imagine all of those scenes. But Larry, there are three illusions that are underlying this fear of travel because of terrorism. And the first illusion is exactly that, that if we can imagine something, it must be likely. So we are afraid of things like shark attacks and our child being abducted by a stranger. And we're afraid of these terrorist bombs because we can picture in our head what might happen. And to, and to prove your point, all those fear of shark attacks can be traced back to the movie Jaws. That's yes. when it really started in earnest. And on the news, we see the terrible images from Kabul and from Manchester. And we can put, with our empathy, we can put ourselves in that situation and take that extra leap. What if it was my child or what if it was my family? But the problem is just because we can picture it doesn't make it real. So the second illusion is that what is familiar is safe and what is unfamiliar is dangerous. But this one is also wrong. Americans are more likely to die violent deaths in the States than abroad. And we're more likely to die in a car accident, but we're more likely to be afraid of a plane flight. Um, we're texting and driving, that you should be terrified of. <laughs> and the third <laughs> That's one? That's a real danger. The third illusion is that if we're just cautious enough, maybe we can prevent any bad thing from ever happening to anyone we love. Wouldn't that be nice if that were true? And it also seems to me, and you tell me if this is true, that, that if it's new or if it's something that's happening in the news or it's exactly. something that's talked about a lot, we're fearful of. For instance, more people die from the flu than, for instance, West Nile, whatever the disease of the week is. Right. More people die of the flu, but the flu we're okay with. Most people won't even get their flu shot. And yet they're scared to death of whatever is being reported that week. Right. Because of the vividness of the images and because of the unfamiliarity. That seems so weird. And the same with the travel. Right. In that we'll drive. We're not going to stop driving because of the car accident we passed. But we'll stop traveling because we're seeing these images on, on, on the news. Exactly. How, how do you treat this? With the all the images out there of the terrible terrorist attacks, there's probably not an adult alive who wouldn't have a momentary thought of, what if something bad happens? And maybe we can't control that first thought, but we can definitely control the second thought, which is that that's not likely, and even more importantly, I refuse to live as a prisoner of fear. Now, we all have this conversation. As you said, everybody has these thoughts. Oh, yes. my goodness, I'm supposed to go to England. There was just an attack in Manchester. Right. Not realizing you know, it's a big country. <laughs> but there's a, just an attack in Manchester. Maybe I shouldn't go. Everybody has those thoughts, as you pointed out. But most of us can get by it because of the importance of the trip, because we, we become rational. There are some people that aren't rational with it, right? It, exactly. it can grow to a psychological problem. Yes. And, and is, that, is, it, is that phobia? We need to get through it. So to some extent, w with if the person doesn't have to go, we, we can focus more on the lo kind of logical things about recognizing the, the irrational thoughts. We can also help people imagine, what if it doesn't? So the image of the scary thing is what's scaring us. We can also conjure other images. I had a mom once who was telling me that she was so afraid of her son being in an accident because he was driving somewhere and he was supposed to have checked in with her and he didn't. So her first thought was, ah, oh, he's dead in a ditch. Oh. But he, she'd worked with me for a while, so she knew to come in with a second thought. And she painted a picture in her head of him forgetting to charge his phone, him staying too long and having a nice lunch and chatting too much. And those images, she imagined them as hard as she could, and they were really Everybody, much more likely. Any parent that's lost a child at the mall knows yes. exactly <laughs> what you're talking about, because the longer it goes on, the worst possibilities you can imagine. Right. And then it almost always turns out well. So, yes. Thank you so much. Larry, thanks I appreciate for having you me. being here. Eileen Kennedy Moore, clinical psychologist and author of Growing Friendships. Growing Friendships, by the way, quickly is about children getting friends? It's about, it's a kid's guide to helping 
the make and keep friends. Wonderful. Thank you so much. When we come back, the federal government is considering a law to stop parents from leaving their children in hot cars. Dawn explains exactly how that would work when another thing continues.